Hi, good afternoon. My name's Clark, and I'm now a junior doctor working in Edinburgh in general medicine. And earlier this year, I was fortunate to be awarded an Encephalitis Society travel bursary for my final year undergraduate elective, where I went to Vancouver. So I'm interested in infectious diseases, both as a clinical specialty and also as a research field. So I wanted to use my elective and travel bursary to get some more clinical experience of IND, which is something that I didn't really have as an undergraduate. So for my elective, I spent one month with an infectious diseases inpatient service at St. Paul's Hospital in Vancouver, and then a second month at a medical microbiology department at Vancouver General Hospital. So infectious diseases at St. Paul's was an inpatient consult service, meaning that although we weren't purely responsible for patients' care, we went to see patients throughout the hospital whose normal doctors were interested in some infection-specific input. So sometimes that took us to the inpatient wards, or to the emergency room, which is the North American slightly trendier term for A&E, and also we spent a fair amount of time in the ITU. ID is quite a big specialty in North America, so there was a strong teaching component to the program. And within about two weeks, I think I probably had more ID teaching than I'd racked up in maybe five years of med school in Edinburgh. So part of the, the attraction of ID for me was that often what we were seeing were quite undifferentiated problems. For example, somebody who's had a fever for many weeks, why, why may this be the case? So from an educational point of view, it was very good uh, for me as a student to perform a systematic history and examination to formulate differential diagnoses for these patients. Um, St. Paul's Hospital is found in downtown Vancouver, which is home to quite a significant ID drug user and HIV positive population. So that was also something new for me to have some experience of HIV medicine and some of the opportunistic infections that these patients get. I include the, the cover of Time magazine here uh, talking about killer microbes because something that I thought was really striking in North America and I hadn't noticed so much in the UK is the, the massive amount of antimicrobial resistance which in some cases was terrifying leaving quite few uh, therapeutic options for some patients. Now. Um, Bubonic plague is an infection that uh, ravaged medieval Europe in the 14th century. It's thought to wipe out about a third of the population. But coming from Edinburgh is not something that I knew all that much about. Uh, it's not exactly right from Edinburgh, it's not exactly right from Glasgow, which is where I come from. Um, but actually, in, in Vancouver, we thought we had a case. Um, we got asked to come to the emergency room to see a patient who was just back from Tanzania, where they'd been staying with their sister. Uh, and this lady had had a fever for some weeks and was also developing a pretty significant swelling in her groin. So we saw her with the, the ID attending physician of the day, who took her history and examined her. And on taking the history, he found out that her sister had a dog, and it had been scratching itself a lot and biting itself, and she noticed some flea bites. Um, and pretty quickly after taking that history and feeling this lump, we, we stepped outside of the room and he said, right now, talk about differential diagnosis, bubonic plague. And I can pretty safely say that I've never seen a senior doctor quite as uh, anxious as this guy was about you know, potentially having a case of plague in his hospital. Um, and the, the picture of the plague doctor with the beaked mask is there because although uh, we didn't put on these big beaks full of cloves and other <laughs> aromatic smelling things, uh, he was pretty keen that when he went back in, we did put on uh, face masks. So my next month was spent with the medical microbiology department at Vancouver General Hospital. Uh, and in the mornings, we would do bench rounds in the lab, looking at some of the significant cultures that were being grown. And it was there that I managed to uh, learn a bit of microscopy and take some photos that I thought were particularly beautiful of you know, yeast and some blood cultures there. Uh, but when I got home, nobody else was all that interested in looking at them with me. One of the things that struck me about microbiology as a specialty was the diversity of it. So clinical management, or giving advice on clinical management formed a big part of it. Uh, but also we were involved in a lot of infection control issues, uh, quality improvement issues in terms of making sure that diagnostic assays work, uh, and research. And I included TV personality as well. So microbiology is not always considered to be the most trendy thing. Um, but actually, when I was there, two of the guys made it onto national TV three times. Um, with this device, which they call Trudy, which was an ultraviolet um, sterilization machine that they would wheel into uh, rooms or wards where someone had had something like norovirus or C. difficile, 
uh, turn it on, everyone goes out, and supposedly this thing uh, sterilized the whole room. So they were doing a clinical trial of that when I was there, uh, and the, the local, or the national Canadian media were very interested in it. So these guys got on TV quite a bit with that. Um, in terms of the relevance of my elective to encephalitis, well, as we've obviously heard about today, a significant chunk of encephalitis is caused by viruses, and herpes simplex virus is probably the biggest in terms of the viral etiology. Again, early diagnosis and treatment is essential, um, but it's a bit of a clinical challenge, so early recognition is important. Whilst I was there, I saw two cases. One whilst I was in the microbiology lab, and that was a more typical case where there was a high index of suspicion to begin with. Uh, and for me, the main learning point there was the, the important of, importance of liaising with the laboratory to arrange the correct test at the correct time to communicate the results appropriately. And then this, the second case was more unusual, occurring in somebody who was immunosuppressed. Um, and I guess the point there is that it wasn't high up in the differential diagnosis to begin with, but maybe having seen that case, it would make me think uh, more closely about it in the future. When I came back to Edinburgh as a student, I actually, uh, there was a case diagnosed in the ward that I was on very shortly after coming back. And since starting work, um, I've been involved in the, the initial assessment of somebody who had a suspected case. So I think that the elective and reading about encephalitis beforehand as, as part of the travel bursary has definitely made me a lot more aware of viral encephalitis uh, and hopefully would increase my index of suspicion for it in the future. Um, I'm quite interested in research in infectious disease and I'm part of a research group led by Professor Jürgen Haas, who's a clinical virologist in Edinburgh. And his research focuses on studying pathogen host interactions for a range of viruses, but his um, main interest is herpes simplex virus. So recently, his group have published a study where they looked for, they, they adopted a systematic approach to discover all the host factors that have functional influence on in HSV infection. And they picked up that interferon lambda is actually a key antiviral factor in controlling herpes simplex virus. Now, interferon lambda is a cytokine or a signaling molecule produced by human cells in response to viral infection. Um, but what they then went on to do was actually characterize some uh, patients who were prone to recurrent cold sores, which is another HSV infection. And they actually found that a very specific genetic variant of the interferon lambda gene was strikingly associated with the frequency and severity of cold sore reactivations. And they, they recently published this in PLOS pathogens. But because the, the initial work was looking at HSV replication in any setting, in, in cell culture, not just for cold sores, uh, it leads to the question, well, perhaps this genetic variant actually could have a bigger role in HSV infection in general. And if the genetic variant predisposing to it is actually the results in defective interferon lambda production, that, that uh, raises the question that there's a therapeutic uh, intervention there. So, uh, we're hoping that perhaps through some contacts with the Encephalitis Society, we may be able to collaborate with other groups to uh, test this theory in HSV encephalitis samples. So I feel like I gained an awful lot from my election, so I'm my elective. So I'm very grateful for having received the travel bursary for it. In terms of infection medicine in general, I think it was very useful to me. And I do feel like I know a lot more about HSV and cephalitis, or viral and cephalitis in general. It's also useful seeing and working in a healthcare system that wasn't the NHS. And hopefully there may be some potential research opportunities to be had. And a final point is that I learned that the, the snow in Whistler in January is just uh, super. <laughs> now, the, the final thing that I want to say is um, about this guy here, Stanley Falco, who many people consider to be one of the greatest bacteriology researchers of current times. And he wrote an essay in 2008 called I Never Met a Microbe I Didn't Like. So after my lecture, I don't think I can really subscribe wholeheartedly to this point of view. And in some ways, I think it's, um, it's not that well thought out, because given the significant mortality and morbidity that microorganisms cause through infectious disease, I don't think that uh, you can really say that. I think uh, being fascinated is fine. It drives research and therapies. I want you to respect them, but I, I don't think to say one likes them is, uh, is a good thing to say. So I'd just really like to reiterate my thanks to the Encephalitis Society for the travel bursary and for the opportunity to come here.